Yo, what's up? This is NY3, and today I'm going to be going over my current format Ritual Beast deck profile containing the support from Raging Tempest. After testing a few different builds, like the 60 card lawn mowing build, which has a full lineup of Triple Lara, Triple Pilica, as well as Summoner Monk's builds, you know, Summoner Monk has gotten better. Since we have a level 4 Tamer now, so Summon a Monk can access both Tamers and Beasts. I've come to the conclusion that the standard 40 card build with the Brilliant Engine is the best one. Although this deck can compete with the current meta due to its inherently high ceiling, high power combos, I wouldn't consider this deck as... A deck of the highest competitive level. So if you're looking for a deck like that, this is not what you're looking for. Just a disclaimer at the beginning. Uh, the biggest reason is decks over the years have gotten more and more consistent. The current combo chance of this deck turn 1 going first is around 55%. Whereas that might have been acceptable in 2015, it is definitely not accept acceptable now. And this consistency issue isn't really one that can be fixed. It's just an inherent flaw in the deck. But regardless, the perks that come with having strong combos is that you can pretty much beat any deck half the time at least. So let's just get into the deck profile. So for the Tamer lineup, we're down to just six. A triple Outer, one of each of Zephyr and Pilica, Lara and Wen. So it's uh, one less than before since we have the new addition Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda, which counts as both a Spiritual Beast and a Ritual Beast. Winda is a really good card. It's probably the best monster in the whole deck to draw if you did not open the combo, since it can float into our Spiritual Beasts such as Arcana Hawk and get the engine going that way. Two Windas also allow you to Winda float into Winda when you're defending, and then when they kill the second Winda you can float into something else. But most importantly of all, Winda solved the power issue that this deck has. By Winda existing in the deck, the deck's overall power has increased. And I'll show why that is at the end with a couple of simple combos. As for the Spiritual Beast lineup, of course, in addition to the two Windas, which counts as both, it's still the standard Pedalfin, Triple Kana Hawk, Triple Rampengu, and Double Apelio. No explanations needed here. For the rest of the monsters, we have one Lazuli, one Fairy Tail Snow, and one Gem Knight Tourmaline. The two Gem Knights obviously here for the Brilliant Engine, and the Fairy Tail Snow is the only light in the deck to make Gem Knight Seraphonite. So drawing it with Brilliant is not ideal, or rather drawing it at all is not very ideal. Of course, I could run more lights, but that's kind of like adding more bricks. Uh, speaking about minimizing bricks, I am running two Gem Knights instead of one. And that's again because of Gem Knight Prismaura in the extra deck. 20 monsters in total. Spells, Triple Brilliant. Research Lab, Oracle of Zephyra, Foolish Burial, Raigeki. Triple Terraforming, Upstart, Bonds, and a Twin Twister. So I am running the Fuel Spell Engine, the full lineup, triple terraforming, one Oracle and one Brain Research Lab. It might seem a bit YOLO since I'm only running one Zephyr Ampelica, which is the only target for Oracle. Again, that's to minimize bricks. The chance to draw both Zephyr Ampelica and Oracle and Oracle is extremely low, uh, just above 1%. But for the purposes of turn 1 combos, it's you either have the Zephyr Ampelica or you don't. The differences between having one Zephyr and Pilica and two Zephyr and Pilicas is never going to be the difference between whether you can combo off or not. The second Zephyr and Pilica is really just there for the grind game. Since games are really fast these days, I believe sacrificing the grind game, which should not have existed in the first place, is definitely fine if we are increasing the overall consistency of the turn one. But otherwise, there's not much to talk about here. Foolish is really just a third brilliant. Foolish can also dump the Fairy Tail Snow, which is possibly one of the most powerful cards in the whole game. 
And especially in this deck, Ritual Beasts, it has a synergy with the engine itself, since we want our banish power as big as possible. And we have cards such as Ulti Karna Hawk that can put up to 10 banished Ritual Beasts back into the graveyard per turn. Having access to the Fairy Tale Snow actually changes the overall playstyle of the deck. For example, you're not going to be using Ulti Karna Hawk in a chain link 1 chain link 2 mana by only putting 1 back from your banish to the grave. You want to put 2 back from your banish into the grave every time if possible. Since Fairy Tail Snow is just going to banish all of that right away anyways. Nothing much more to talk about the spell lineup except the 1 Twin Twister and 1 Raigeki. Really wish that these were just 2 more upstarts to make the deck 37 but of course that's not legal to do so. So yeah I picked one generic front row and one generic back row removal instead of doubling up on either since the difference between having zero copies of something and two copies of something is greater than the difference between having one copy of something and two copies of something. So that's 13 spells and the last seven cards are traps uh, being three ambush, three steeds and one torrential tribute. Of course, Torrential Tribute has some pretty nice synergy with the deck since you can activate it on Chainlink 2 and your Ritual Beast ulti tagging out on Chainlink 1. And also, Mass Removal as well as Traps are the two weaknesses of Zodiac. Torrential Tribute is both of those things, making it the best generic trap in the game. I'm not going to show a side deck for this build, but of course, it's worth mentioning that cards like Dimensional Barrier is very good for combo decks such as this where you since that extra one turn can swing the whole entire game around if you resolve a combo but cards like dimensional barrier ultimately comes down to what type of meta you're going into of course if everyone is playing zodiacs then definitely go ahead and main it instead of side it uh, the other thing that's absent that might be worth talking about are maxis since this deck has a engine of 37 cards maxi kind of becomes a bluff since you can draw your whole deck you can draw 30 cards and you're still unable to play through a field or break a board if you're not running staples such as twin twisters or ragiki as for the extra deck 10 fusions gem knight seraph knight double ulti pedalfin ulti kana hawk Ulti Apelio, Chrismaura, double OT Guy Apelio. So yeah, the two brilliant fusion targets, Chrismaura, obviously its primary function is to have access to little Kana Hawk by dumping it into the graveyard. The other interaction is by playing two Gem Knights, one being a Thunder, Lazuli can. Add back the Tourmaline to your hand, making Brilliant Fusion a one card out to things such as Imperial Iron Wall, which is somewhat popular right now due to Infernoids. Uh, Seraph Knight being the secondary target for Brilliant Fusion. If you already have access to either a Rampingu or a Kana Hawk, but want a double summon instead, it gives multiple uses for Brilliant Fusion. The rest of the OT lineup is pretty standard. The rest of the extra deck are 5 exceeds, Digusto Emerald to mostly recycle the Ulti Kana Hawk if something happens to it. Its second effect sometimes also come up, comes up, which special summons the Gem Knight Tourmaline from your graveyard, contributing to OTKs. Uh, Best Dweller, which can really be anything, so again it depends what your, what type of meta you're going to be playing this in. Of course Abyss Dweller is very broken against decks that it does work against, which is why it's here. Other good options you could have would be Steel Swarm Roach for Infernoids, or even Karen Gorgon for Paleozoics. Uh, Lightning Chidori, amazing rank 4 for decks that can make it, and the two Utopias. This deck does have some problems with random beaters, and this also puts a lot of damage on board for OTK plays. So yeah, just going to show an example of how 
the existence of spiritual beast tamer Winder increase the overall power of this deck. Uh, the best way to do it is just to show the standard combo. So something like Elder Kana Hawk, we know what this ends on before. It used to end on an ulti Kana Hawk that can tag out three ritual beasts in the graveyard, a steeds and an ambush. So that was the old power ceiling of this two card combo. But now, uh, normal Elder, normal Kana. Kana banishes Winda, Fuse, we're not going to search the first time, so just contact out. Kana Hawk banishes and Pingu, Fuse into Oti Kana Hawk. This time we are going to search, so Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2. Summoning Pingu and Winda, putting Outer into the graveyard. This gets us a Steeds. Penguin can banish Apelio to dump Apelio. And then we can contact into Oti Kana Hawk again, sending two back to search. Instead of ambush, we can search a second steeds. The reason why that is is because we have the window that guarantees our opponent being unable to clear our board. So if this was all we had, we can simply set both pass turn on their standby phase, tag out the Oti Kana Hawk since kaijus are a thing now for Winda and Kana Hawk. No matter if they try to run over the Winda or try to Rageki the Winda, the Winda is always going to float and because it floats, our steeds are always going to be live. So we have two steeds which is two layers of disruption instead of one. Even though this is only two steeds for two each, the previous ambush combo admittedly is also stronger against Twin Twister since if they hit the ambush you can chain it. But Ritual Beast has been experiencing this problem for a while now is that it lacks the power. Ambush Steeds is no longer an auto win like it was two years ago. Most decks are able to make multiple plays per turn. For example, if they normal summon a rat that's a huge threat which we would want to clear, since if it goes unanswered, it's going to generate a plus 4. But if we only have 1 steeds and answer that, they might have a barrage to follow up on that, in which case we're pretty much screwed. Or if they have a terror top, which can make totem bird, that is also a threat. So the majority of the time, having a lone steeds is not going to cut it anymore, even though since steeds and ambush is better in a vacuum, but we don't play it in a vacuum, we have to consider what our opponent might have. One steeds is simply not enough these days. And the existence of Wunder allows us to search double steeds instead of steeds ambush. Increasing the overall disruption we can do on our opponent's turn just off standard combos such as Aldakana. Hence, Wunder leading to an overall power increase of the deck. Back to the argument that this is weaker than Twin Twisters, unless of course we have a third back row, which could even be a bluff terraforming. It de depends what the other three cards in addition to our hand was. Uh, once we have a third thing we can set, this is no longer really weaker to Twin Twisters than Steed's Ambush. Uh, also, if you're maining or siding a dimensional barrier, but another reason would be that it counters Twin Twisters. Uh, these factors together makes the Twin Twister argument much weaker than it actually is. On the other hand, things like My Body as a Shield are popular right now. And if we only have one Steeds for Disruption and that gets negated by My Body as a Shield, then we are literally doing no Disruption at all on our opponent's turn if we only searched Steeds Ambush and have no other naturally drawn traps that can disrupt. So at least if they have my body is a shield, which negates one steeds, we still have the second steeds for some sort of attempt at disruption on our opponent's turn. But yeah, that has been the updated Ritual Beast deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out YGOsingles.com for, well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Singles. And don't forget to use the 5% discount code NY333YGO there. Best of luck to all of our competitors at YCS Prague this weekend.